Oil is undoubtedly one of society's greatest influencers today. Along with other fossil fuels, the world today has transformed quickly from agricultural societies to urbanized metropolises. With this change, the growing energy market was created to supply the world with energy. Some of the biggest corporations involved in the energy market are British Petroleum, or BP, and Chevron. This video will examine these two corporations in different aspects, like its history, products, integration, some statistics, and its public image. We shall start with BP. British Petroleum started out as a subsidiary of Burma Oil Company and was named the Anglo-Persian Oil Company during the early 20th century. In 1935, the company was renamed the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company. Nineteen years later, the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company became British Petroleum in 1954. BP has expanded its operations worldwide and since its humble beginning has grown to become a true multinational corporation. BP's main product is petrol for motorists. Oil is an inelastic good, which means that its quantity demanded is not very responsive to price or changes. The quantity demanded for oil will remain relatively constant despite price fluctuations. It is also an inelastic good as it has very few closely related substitutes that are cheap and currently it is a necessity. British Petroleum is active in over 100 countries worldwide. British Petroleum targets the average consumer with its gas stations worldwide. Other than petrol, BP sells complementary goods like car lubricants and motor oil. Aside from selling oil related products, BP is involved in harnessing renewable energy as a response to the growing need for clean energy. Horizontal integration is a situation when a company merges or buys out other companies within the same market. An example of BP horizontal integration was when BP merged with Amoco in 1998. BP has three main subsidiaries. Castrol, which was acquired in 2000, produces car lubricants. Aerol, sells fuel in Germany and was bought when BP Germany took over B Viva Oil in 2002. And Arco, which sells gas in the U.S. West Coast, was bought in 2000. BP is involved in vertical integration, which is when the company is involved in manufacturing all the way through to retail, from the extraction of hydrocarbons from the land and sea to the selling of petrol to consumers. BP's labor force has shrunk in recent years. From 98,000 in 2007, it has dwindled to over 80,000 in 2009. In 2009, a recession occurred, which affected the revenues of BP as consumers became more conservative in where they spent their money. The decrease in consumer spending on petrol lowered BP's profits and therefore the multinational corporation had to lay off thousands of employees. Oil prices also dropped from its peak at 2008, which lowered BP's income. As for the revenue of BP, there is no clear trend. The price of oil per barrel reached its peak in 2008 because of growing demand in India and China. The high price of oil led to BP to reap large profits. As price elasticity of demand for oil is inelastic, therefore the revenue during 2008 is highest. However, in 2009, BP's revenue dropped significantly. This is because of oil prices declining and the recession. As oil prices fall, income decreases. According to BP, BP is an innovative energy corporation. It adopted the slogan Beyond Petroleum to reflect their interest in other fields besides from oil. Its logo is the Helios, otherwise known as the Sun, to reflect a potentially great source of energy. The shape of the logo is a flower, which symbolizes nature's ability to harness renewable energy. Its public image has been hampered by the fiasco that occurred in the oil rig off the coast of Mexico. Since then, BP has been has been portrayed as a corporation which neglects safety and lacks environmental conscience. We shall now look at Chevron. Chevron came out of the breakup of John Rockefeller Standard Oil. Standard Oil of California became the oldest form of Chevron. Standard Oil of California, or abbreviated to SoCal, quickly became a multinational corporation when it traveled around the world to prospect for oil, most notably in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The multinational corporation became one of the first to drill for oil in the oil-rich Middle East. They dropped the SoCal moniker in 1977 to offer the Chevron name to create a global brand. Like BP, Chevron is mostly into the gasoline market for consumers. However, it is not just hydrocarbons that Chevron sells. They are involved in coal, geothermal, and solar energy. Chevron operates in 28 countries across the world. Outside of oil and energy, Chevron sells motor oil, lubricant, and car care products. Chevron supplies gasoline to the average consumer in countries they operate in. For example, Caltex, which is a subsidiary of Chevron, sells petrol to consumers. They extract oil from mostly OPEC member states like Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. Chevron is involved in both horizontal and vertical integration. One example of horizontal integration was in 1984 when they merged with Gulf Oil. Another example was in 2001 where the firms Texaco and Chevron merged. One other example was with Unical in 2005. Texaco is now a subsidiary of Chevron. It markets gas and car care products. Caltex is also a subsidiary of Chevron. Caltex sells petrol and car products but in the Asia-Pacific region. Chevron is involved in the extraction of raw materials all the way through to retailing the finished product. Therefore, it is a vertically integrated corporation. From 2005 to 2008, the labor force of Chevron steadily increased. 
2008 was profitable for oil companies as the price of oil increased to its peak, which led Chevron to make more money than before. With more money, the firm chose to hire more people to become more productive. However, in 2009, Chevron's labor force decreased by more than 1,712 workers. This was so because the recession forced oil consumption to decrease and the price of oil decreased, which led to lower profits. Low profits forced the company to fire employees to maximize profits. The revenue of Chevron has been increasing from 2005 to 2008 because of the high oil prices in 2008. Since oil is inelastic, a price increase gives producers more revenue. In 2009, the poor economic climate and falls in oil prices decreased Chevron's revenue. Chevron uses the slogan, Human Energy, to describe the company. It has branded itself as a firm committed to the environment and to people. Chevron's latest ad campaign, entitled We Agree, has been a subject of numerous hoaxes by environmental groups. Environmentalist groups have created an elaborate hoax of Chevron aimed at showing the company's hidden side. They have raised awareness for the ongoing Ecuadorian lawsuit which has given the firm bad press. So bad that they had to counteract the media pressure with a page on their website with their side of the story. There are many similarities between BP and Chevron. Only differing in size and scale, the two institutions have enormous power financially. Due to the power of oil, the two firms are one of the largest companies in the world today and will continue to be so as long as the world is addicted to oil. However, in the long run, we may see the supply of oil dwindle. This will cause equilibrium to shift up, thus making the price of oil more expensive. Oil will become expensive and demand will fall, which will increase the demand for other sources of energy. The dwindling supply of oil is forcing oil companies to expand their operations to fields other than oil. As long as oil stays cheaper compared to its cleaner substitutes, the world will continue to be a slave to the stuff we call black gold. Hold it for the rest of soul lie down. Life for a while you hear against the earth. And you hear your sister sleep talking, so your hair is long and not long enough to reach her to me. But you be it, someday my be. But you wake up in a cold sweat on the floor Next to a fairy portrait drawn when you fall And beside a jar of two cent coins that I'll never get no more She lay aside 